Okay, good, good day everybody and welcome to Engineering Statistics. Um, for this video, we're going to have a look at question 1.1 in the prescribed textbooks, uh, which deals with migraine and acupuncture. Okay, so in the textbook, they say a migraine is a particularly painful type of headache, uh, which patients sometimes, sometimes wish to treat with acupuncture. Um, so to determine whether acupuncture relieves migraine pain, researchers conducted a randomized controlled study where 89 females diagnosed with migraine headaches were randomly assigned to one of two groups. Um, so these two groups were a treatment group and a control group. Okay, so um, 40, 43 patients were in the treatment group um, and they received the acupuncture that is specifically designed to treat migraines. Um, and the other 46 patients, they were in the control group um, and they received placebo acupuncture. Um, so basically a needle was inserted at a non-acupoint location. Um, so 24 hours after patients received acupuncture, um, they were asked if they were pain-free. Um, so in this question, they give us the results, uh, which are summarized in a contingency, contingency table. Um, and then based on that, we're going to answer three questions. Okay, so the questions are what percent of patients in the treatment group were pain-free 24 hours after receiving acupuncture? Um, and then we're going to answer that for the control group as well. Okay, so the second question is, um, at first glance, uh, does acupuncture appear to be an effective um, treatment for migraines? And, and there we have to explain our reasoning. And then for the third question, um, there they ask us, do the data prevert, um, provide convincing evidence that there is a real pain reduction for those patients in the treatment group? Um, or do we think that the observed differences might just be due to chance? Okay, so we're going to answer that three questions quickly, um, and I'm going to take you step by step through the questions and the reasoning for giving the specific answers. Uh, before we start with the question, um, let's first look at the information that they gave us, um, the data that they gave us. So in the textbook, you'll see that they summarize the data quite nicely in the contingency table, um, but that won't always be the case. Um, sometimes we only have a little bit of information and we have to complete the contingency table by our ourselves. Um, so I'm going to first start with that. So over here we have our main information, uh, which they gave us. Um, so T here stands for treatment group, C stands for control group. Um, and here we have our subjects. So these are the guys in the treatment group um, who experienced the acupuncture. And we see that about 10 of them um, were pain-free after a while. Um, and 33 of them were not um, pain-free after the acupuncture. And then there's a control group, and we see two of them in the control group uh, were pain-free after the acupuncture, and 44 of them were not pain-free after the acupuncture. Um, so to answer that first question and the subsequent question, uh, we first need to complete the contingency table. Um, so what we need to do is we need to figure out, okay, how many people in total were in our treatment group. Um, so that's simple. That is the sum of the people that are yes and no. So in total, there were 43 people in our treatment group, and then the same how many people were in our control group, that is 2 plus 44, so that is equal to 46 uh, people were in our control group. Okay, so we can also see, okay, about how many people in total were pain-free after the um, acupuncture treatment. So that is simply 10 plus 2, so that's 12 people in total for this whole study was pain-free after the um, acupuncture treatment. And then the same for how many people were not pain-free after the acupuncture. So that is 33 plus 44, so that means 77 people were not pain-free um, after they received um, either one of the types of acupuncture. Okay, so the last part then is how many people were in the study in total. Um, so that's simply 12 plus um, 77, which is equal to um, 89. So we had a total of 89 participants in the study. Um, 46 of them were in the control group. 43 of them were in the treatment group. And I'm just going to take one value. Of those 43 people in the treatment group, 10 were pain-free after they experienced their acupuncture. Okay, so now that we have this set up, we can now actually go um, and answer the questions that they give us in the textbook. Okay, so um, the first question we're going to look at is what percent of patients in the treatment group were pain-free 24 hours after receiving acupuncture? Okay, so we're going to have to look at the treatment group, which is T over there. So we're going to look at this row. Um, and there we see that 10 of the patients uh, were pain-free after the 24 hours. Um, and there were a total of 43 patients in that group. Okay, so the proportion of patients that were pain-free in the treatment group after acupuncture is simply going to be 10 divided by 43, and that is equal to 0 0.2325. 
Okay, so that's the answer to the first, um, first part in this question. Okay, and then for the second part of question A, um, they ask us, okay, what percent in the control group um, were pain-free after 24 hours? So in this case, it's going to be there were two patients in the control group that were pain-free after 24 hours. So that's simply going to be 2 divided by 46, and that equals to 0 0.0435. Okay, so that's the proportions in each of those groups that were pain-free after 24 hours. So we see for the treatment group, it was 0 0.23, about 23% were pain-free um, after receiving acupuncture. And in the other group, it was 0 0.04. So it was less than 5% uh, were pain-free after the treatment. So based on this, if you compare these two, we'll see there's quite a big difference uh, between those two groups. Okay, so the second question they asked there is, at first glance, does acupuncture appear to be an effective treatment for migraines? And we have to explain our reasoning. Um, so when we make that decision, we would like to use the data, uh, the information that's available to us, um, and we want to reason on based on that, based on our calculations. So we saw that the treatment group um, had a yes there proportion of 0 0.23, and the other group had a yes proportion of 0 0.04. And as I said, there's quite a big difference between this group. So the difference there, if you have to subtract those two, is about 0 0.19. So there's about a 19% difference in the proportion of people that um, experience a positive outcome from the treatment in a control group. Um, so based on this, we would actually say yes. Um, from this study, there seems to be, um, it, it's, it, it seems that acupuncture, when applied correctly, does have a positive effect on the um, effects of migraine. And how do we get there? We get this by looking at the proportions. So a lot more people in the treatment group um, actually had a positive outcome than in a control group. And there's a big difference between them. So in this case, the answer there would be yes. Um, at first glance, it does appear that acupuncture is an effective um, treatment for migraine. Um, and we can explain that based on the data. Um, there's a big difference between those two groups. And this value is much bigger than that value. So therefore, we see that, yes, the effective treatment, um, in this case, did have a positive impact. Okay, so for the last question, they ask there, uh, do the data provide convincing evidence that there's a real pain reduction for those patients in the treatment group? Um, or do you think that the observed difference might just be, to, uh, be due to chance? Um, so in this case, we're still very early in the module. Um, so there's actually two possible answers here. The answer there is yes and no. Um, so firstly, this difference might actually be due to chance. Uh, we're not sure. It might just happen that the people that like to be touched, I suppose, and get less headaches, that they just happen to be in the treatment group. Um, and the other guys are in the control group. So there's a chance that this observation might just happen by chance. Um, so later in the course, we'll actually look at better ways to formally test this, um, statistical ways and methods to see whether this um, is really significant evidence um, that, um, that um, acupuncture does make a difference. Okay, so for now, uh, we can't really say. Um, so we can either say, no, this might be due to chance. We're not sure. We're going to have to perform more, um, more rigorous statistical methods to test it. Um, or we can say that, you know what, this is quite a big difference. It's 19%. So we can say, yes, um, there is enough evidence. Um, so this early in the course, actually both answers are right, um, as long as the reasoning behind them is, is, is correct as well. So if you said yes, um, this is a significant evidence. Um, the reason for that is because this difference is so big. That's why we can say yes. Um, and the other one is if you say no, um, again, that can be correct as long as your reasoning is correct. And there it's no because this might be due to, due to chance. We haven't applied formal statistical methods um, to test this.